Hi. I, uh, I'm a little tired. Uh, just finished a reception and they didn't give us any breaks. We just played for hour after hour. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what? I got an email asking me to handle Philippians 2. Therefore, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who operates in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, what I always say when you get someone, who, so see, this is a person who I think was maybe attacked with this verse or something and debate about grace. And when you get a verse like this, always ask the person if they know what the book is about. Do they know what the chapter is about? And you'll find that people don't. They're just perusing and pulling a verse out of context and throwing it at you. So it is good to have in your mind um, kind of like a sentence that summarizes the book. And everybody can do this on their own and come up with their own sentence. All you have to do is do an outline of the themes of the chapters in a book and then see if you can distill it into a sentence that will help you have the organization of that book in your head. Um, and I'm not talking about one with 24 chapters. You know, like, I, I'm not talking about the Gospels. That's kind of harder. But uh, the letters, you can, you can do this. And I haven't done it with all of them, but, you know, like Romans, for example, you could say Romans is... Um, justification by the Son of God to establish peace and transfer us out of Adam and into Christ so that we can become sons of God who are indwelt by the Spirit, identified with Him in His death and resurrection, and destined with Him to inherit glory. That's Romans 1 through 8. And then, you know, 12 through 16, I like to say it's not just practical Christian life. A lot of people say, well, that's just the practical Christian life. No, it's the sons of God expressed in a church life uh, as the body of Christ in unity bearing one another in love. <laughs> Something like that. It's the So it's the sons of God who have now... Uh, are partakers of the inheritance who are now learning to dwell in unity in a practical church life to be the body of Christ for Christ's expression something like that um, so you can do this with the books and Philippians I think that a good way to say it is Philippians is the book that shows us what living Christ by the bountiful supply of his spirit to magnify him in our body for his testimony. That seems to be what Philippians is about. Uh, living Christ by the bountiful supply of his spirit for the magnification of Christ in his body, in, in my body, for a testimony. And that's what Philippians is all about. And so when you get to uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who operates in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure, what kind of salvation is it talking about? What is is salvation used elsewhere in <laughs> in that book? Why well, yes it is. Paul says in the end of chapter one, I think eighteen one of my favorite sections, he says, For I know that this, my situation, will turn out to salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that, uh, as always, even now, Christ may be magnified in my body whether through life or through death. I'll say it again. I love it. This shall turn out to me 
uh, for salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that, as always, even now, Christ, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether through life or through death. So what is salvation in Philippians? It is the magnification of Christ by the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Christ so that Christ is put on display in my body, whether through life or through death. For to, me, to live is Christ and to die is gain, right? So what is Paul talking about there? He's in prison, and yet his imprisonment is turning out for a testimony. The Praetorian Guard, those in Caesar's household, have all heard the gospel, and the brothers who were timid, having heard of Paul's afflictions, have grown bold and are proclaiming the word of Christ, and Christ is being preached everywhere. What is that? That is the salvation of Christ being worked out among the members of his body through the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And it starts with Paul. He's in that situation, and he could murmur and complain and say, Oh, those brothers out there are preaching the gospel out of contention, seeking to add affliction to my bonds, which he does say. He could say, Oh, woe is me. My life is over. This sucks. This is terrible. Everything has come to ruin. No. He says, Oh, I rejoice in this because... The word of Christ is, whether through pretense or truth, the word of Christ is being magnified. It's growing. The gospel's going out. That's beyond me. And then he says, thank you for praying for me. And he says, I know this will work out to salvation. Now, what is salvation there? Is it eternal salvation? No, because he's already saved. He wouldn't be preaching the gospel if he wasn't. Is it salvation from prison this will turn out so that I get the chains broken off and I get out of here my situation gets better no because he says even if I'm being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith I rejoice he knows that there's a very good chance he's gonna die so how could this be salvation that delivers him from prison that's not what he has in view what does he have in view I'm kind of being I'm not trying to be condescending here. I'm, I'm, I'm just breaking it down and thinking about the words and responding to them. What is salvation? Salvation is that Christ is being put on display in Paul in that terrible situation. What a testimony. Christ is being magnified in my body. And for me to live is Christ. The ultimate goal of salvation is that you would live Christ that we would live Christ. And this can't be done by me surrendering myself and committing myself to Christ and trying real hard. No. This is through the bountiful supply. There's a bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ to magnify Christ in my body. This is about resurrection life. This is not Paul. This is Christ on display in the earthen vessel. We see the earthen vessel, but what we see in Philippians, beyond any other epistle probably, is the treasure shining. Paul is shining as a luminary. Does that sound familiar? Of course it does, because then he talks about you also. He's setting himself as a pattern. He's into patterns in Philippians. Remember, have this mind in you which also was in Christ Jesus, who didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God, right? But put off that form and took upon himself the form of a man and was found in the fashion of a servant, even as a slave, and then even went to death as a criminal. He went all the way down. And then you need to think of more, others more excellent than yourself. That kind of mind. So he sets Christ as a pattern, but he also sets himself as a pattern. What is the pattern that he's exhibiting? For me to live is Christ and die is gain. And for me, the definition of salvation in this moment is that Christ would be magnified in my body. And this is not by my effort. 
This is by the grace, because he says to those uh, in Philippians, he says, for as much as you are uh, partakers with me uh, in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, we are fellow partakers of grace. So they are partaking of the grace through the gospel. Okay, and this is grace on display. And grace is not just unmerited favor. Grace is God himself to be our supply. That's what it says in John. Of his fullness we have received grace upon grace. So grace is God himself flowing out in the sun as the Spirit to us. The bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ to be magnifying Christ in my body so that Christ is on display in me no matter what my situation is. This is so far beyond us, but you know what? It's by His grace, and I'm in Ephesians, and it talks about how you know, each person is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. It's God's choice. God needed to bountifully supply Paul as an individual in that situation because through Paul, he is bringing the gospel to the Gentiles and totally changing the age to the age of grace and the, age, the church age. So, so he needs him to be, Christ absolutely needs to be absolutely exalted in this apostle. But then he turns to the saints and says, Okay, you also do all things without murmuring and complaining, so that you may shine as luminaries in the present age, and against a backdrop of corruption, right? Holding forth the word of life. This is what they is talking about. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who operates in you. The operating God is the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is the grace of God, of His fullness we've received. And this fullness is God in His operation, coming to dwell in me and magnify Christ in me. But for Paul, it was kind of individualistic because he was stuck in prison, and God gave him a bountiful supply. But you know what? He also gives groups of people a bountiful supply. And he was talking not to individuals, but to the church at Philippi, who had a fellowship. And he's telling them all together to hold forth the word of life, and that this is their salvation as a group. You know, for you to shine against the backdrop of corruption, in contrast to the darkness around you, you're shining and holding forth the word of life. And this is not by your power, but it is by the grace of God, the operating God, the God who operates in you, supplying you with Christ and resurrection, so that Christ is magnified in your bodies. Now, it's each person has a smaller portion compared to what Paul had. He wasn't expecting individuals to be able to measure up to what he was doing, I don't think. Because he knew his place in God's economy or, you know. But he did expect as a group that they would encourage each other and pray for each other. And he set himself as the pattern. And so salvation in Philippians is a present tense salvation. It is not eternal salvation. It's not salvation from your circumstances. It's salvation in your circumstances so that your circumstances do not cause you to murmur and complain, but rather the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ and the God who operates within you gives you the grace to instead shine as luminaries and hold forth the word of life. That's salvation. That is salvation in the present tense. So there's past tense salvation. I was saved and I was sealed with the Holy Spirit when I believed. And then there's present tense salvation, which is that I could live in a way that magnifies Christ. And then there's ultimate salvation, which is the redemption of my body, resurrection, or rapture. Now, <laughs> don't put a standard on yourself. Everybody has grace given to them according to the measure of the gift of Christ and we are in the apostasy we are there's almost no lampstands left the, 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 there's almost no 
you know, I can't even find a church. I, I have no fellowship in my Christian life in person. I've got my YouTube channel. Am I shining, you know, as I would like to with a group of people being built up as the body of Christ? No, I don't have that in my personal life. Is that hypocrisy? No, it's just my situation. And I'm just doing what I can do and believe in God to get me out of here in time. <laughs> that, you know, I'll get out of here before I, before the light goes out, you know, and I will, and you will too. Uh, don't take this verse and put a big standard on you and do not let anybody take you into bondage. You know, Paul says in this, in chapter three, beware the dogs, beware the concision, for we are the circumcision who uh, worship in spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. We have zero confidence in ourselves. We are not expecting anything of ourselves. And we are the true circumcision, not performed by hands, but in the putting off the body of the flesh through the death of Christ. We realize God had to crucify us. There was nothing good there in me. So if anything good's going to happen, it's going to be because of God operating in me, the grace operating in me, and the uh, life-giving spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ bountifully supplied to me. Beyond that, I got nothing. So you can relax, really. And some people won't like that message, but they're off. They're Beware. Beware the dogs. The dogs are those that are just always looking to bite and devour you. Stay away from them. Uh, and anyone who uses Philippians to try to bring you into works and try to tell you that salvation is by works, you have to treat it like a dog. I mean, you're not going to be able to reason with them. You could try to describe this all that they want. They'll just say, oh, you're just playing games with the word. They'll, you know, they won't listen to a word you say, and they'll accuse you more of just, you're just trying to get out of your work. You're just trying to get out of this whole thing and be lazy, you know? Ugh, it's so frustrating. Um, hopefully this brings some clarity to it. I enjoyed it. I mean, honestly, this was just a chance for me to recite some Philippians. <laughs> all right, talk to you later.